Two of the best name brands in airsoft are KWA and G&G. &G. And when you're looking for an airsoft gun, they're great brands to either start with or grow with because they offer different product lines from basics all the way up to competition grade. Today, we're gonna look at the two shorty entries for these two. We have the brand new KWA Eve 6 and the G&G &G 556. Both short, both compact, and they both have different reasons why you should buy them. So watch this video to learn which one you should buy. So let's look at the KWA Eve first. This one's a limited edition, hence the light blue accents, but the, the normal production one will be all black, including the magazine. This is a new entrant for KWA, meaning that these are this is like a full gun. It's full ground up. It's not an M4, it's not an SMG, it's, it's totally, the mad minds of KWA put this thing together. What makes it unique is it's fully polymer, which is unique because KWA mainly produces metal guns. So you have a lightweight polymer body here. You have an integral grip right here. You also have a unique upper receiver with an MP5 type charging handle, which if you hit this little lever right here, uh, locks the hop-up chamber back so you can have easy access to change the hop-up. You get a kind of a flush mount M-lock rail in the front and you get the KWA front grip. Besides that, you have ambidextrous controls, which are clearly marked, so you have no excuse why you're not using full auto or using full auto in buildings. You get an ambidextrous mag release, so you have it right here, as well as right here. You get this awesome PDW stock, which gives you three points of locking, so you get three different lengths. One of the negative things with PDWs, and it is with this KWA, luckily there's a solution that we'll get to, is battery space. You're gonna need to use LiPo batteries. And KWA has recently switched all their guns to Dean's type batteries. One of the things that you can buy from AirTech Studios is a battery extension. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get increased battery space, however, you're gonna lose one of your adjustments because you can no longer smush it all the way back. Finally, you get these awesome PTS front and rear sights, as well as a real cool orange flash hider that's very easy to take off so that you can put your favorite Ace Tech mock suppressor on it or whatever mock suppressor you would like. The KWA Eve, when it does come out, is gonna come in the shorter version as well as a little bit longer version with a normal PTS type stock. Now that we look to the externals of this awesome KWA rifle, we're gonna talk about the internals. With the EVE, you have this awesome rotary hop-up, which gives you positive engagement, so you get better accuracy downrange. You also get their normal gearbox that is in their T6 um, and the VM4. It's a really good solid gearbox that easily takes gate tighten MOSFETs without too much modification. Um, so you're gonna get a really quality solid gearbox. And for under $300, this is a tough one to beat. Now, one of the major drawbacks of this gun, one, this one has a PDW stock. We already talked about the battery space. That may not be good for some people. The second, which we're gonna figure out how this is gonna affect, because we don't know yet, because these first come out, is they're working with an integral motor grip. Now that gives you awesome positive engagement of your motor to your gears. However, is this gonna be something people break? I don't know. And if you do break this, it's gonna break the whole lower receiver. So we'll see how that works out in the future. The second thing is that for some accessories, this flush mount kind of style um, M-lock rail here gets in the way of some like angled accessories because it's not protruding from the actual rail. It makes it slim, makes it unique. However, you're gonna have some potentially some issues mounting some of your rail accessories to that. But other than that, price point's right on. It's a good quality gun by KWA. Now that we've looked at the awesome KWA Eve, we're gonna look at G&G 556, as I like to call it the Snaggletooth, because it's got an underbite bigger than Nigel Thornberry. Did he have an underbite? Or he had an overbite. Okay, the reverse of Nigel Thornberry. This would be Nigel Thornberry. This version is kind of unique in the fact that it is, it does come in two variants. It comes with a polymer variant and as well as a metal variant. The only difference between the two, internally they're the same, 
Externally, they're different where you get a metal upper and lower receiver. That's going to be above $300. And at the $300 price point, you're going to get a full polymer version. So it's kind of just preference. Both are going to come with a metal rail, however. Now, the GNG 556 does come with a basic MOSFET in it. It also has a rotary hop up, just like the Eve 6. You get a PDW style stock, although this one only has two points of enlargement. Okay, that's right, enlargement. Um, but just like with the KWA Eve, they also make, AirTech Studios also makes a battery extension for this. You can, however, replace this whole thing with a normal stock setup. The GNG does have this nice, cool rail. The rail is the same length as the E. Now, even though this one is the polymer version, it's still a little bit heavier than the Eve, but it's more traditional in its looks. You still have ambidextrous fire selectors, ambidextrous a mag release. So externally, the difference between these two is the physical body looks, and if you go with the metal version over the polymer, as well as the grip, where this is not integral, that is integral. So again, that is something to think about. And we don't know, maybe that's gonna be fine, but we just don't know yet. You get cool, awesome flip up sights here. So that's a great feature there. Kind of basic compared to the KWAs, but still a feature. So let's talk about the insides. I took the stock off just cause it looks funny that way. So the insides, you're gonna get a great solid, robust G&G GC intermediate gearbox. Um, with a basic MOSFET in there, which is allows you to do a few things. It allows you to have a programmable trigger so you can change your gun to burst settings or anything like that. Um, you can use one of the Payroon um, like upgrade kits, which just plug directly in the back. So that's a good upgrade that you can do for like 60 to 70 bucks. So that's something you can't do on the KWA because the KWA does not have a MOSFET where the GNG does. Um, but other than that, it's pretty standard inside. So. Overall, the gearbox, even though the KWA has a great gearbox, this gearbox, the G&G one, has a slight advantage when it comes to a MOSFET already inside, and you can already do some things without actually cracking inside the gearbox. But the great news is both will shoot CQB friendly under 350 feet per second. So where's the disadvantages of this? Well, first, it's a little bulkier, a little heavier. It's not new, so people aren't gonna like go, oh my God, it's the newest thing in the world. It's a little older. It is the 5.56 version of the Air P9, so it's gonna be a little bit more generic when someone sees this, the KWA versus when someone sees this, they're just gonna think this is a normal M4. If you do wanna change the rail out, these rails on these GNGs are extremely tough and difficult to take off, as well as you have a sunken flash hider, so that's very hard to take off, and not all mock suppressors will fit inside of this. The other thing that's negative, even though it was a positive, is the MOSFET, is that these are a little bit more prone to having MOSFET errors because it's one more point of breakage. Um, that usually is corrected with the pay rune, but you're gonna pay an additional 60 bucks for that. The last thing that is a negative to this is the battery space. And even though the KWA has bad battery space, this has worse. First off, the stock is thinner and the main MOSFET components are jammed already in this tube. So not, not only do you have to compete with the battery space, you have to compete with the cord space, and now you have to compete with extra slack for the MOSFET. So that's kind of like a very, it's a challenge to get a battery, especially an 11.1, one um, to run in these g 556. Again, it can be cured with a battery extension, but it's something that you have to buy extra, as well as deal with a lot of cords in comparison to the KWA. So that was a whole lot of stuff that we talked about. So you're gonna be wondering now that you've looked at these two, seen how awesome they are. They're both great guns. Let's go see how both of these shoot on an 11.1 15C battery to show you both the range, accuracy, as well as rate of fire. So we do have the, the KWA Eve right here. We're gonna see how it shoots on the 11.1 15C Elite Force battery to Dean's, because that's what KWA is. Let's do about 50 feet. And we're going to look at the accuracy and the rate of fire of this awesome small gun. I'm going left, okay? Do I need sights? Yeah, probably. It'll suck. There we go.
right, so let's go look how that shot. It looked pretty accurate. That's a nice crisp trigger pull with this awesome blade trigger. Yeah, look at it, he got scuffed up a little bit. He's okay. Not the damage we were looking for, but the damage we deserve, scratches. So as you see right here, this is where I was kind of hitting the uh, single shots. So it was actually, you know, pretty solid for a stock. Um, we're using 32 gram BBs, 50 feet. So that's pretty good grouping right there. We started using full auto, it started, you know, blooming a little bit, but overall pretty accurate on burst. So, and like I said, the trigger pull is very, very accurate with this and um, got no complaints. You're gonna hit people with this. Let's go see the 5.56 five, take some shots. All right, so we're at the same distance, same battery, different gun, different mat. We're using a PTS mat, okay, then a, then a KWA mat. Okay, shoot me. Yeah, this stock is long. Replace the stock. And these sights, pinhole sights. Yeah, not gonna work. We're just gonna sort of aim. Let's go see. I think one observation is this one screeches a whole lot more than the KWA. So um, we shot more BBs. Um, accuracy was very, very similar, especially on full auto. I think actually the full auto group just a little bit better than the KWA, but uh, this thing's not gonna be stealthy, okay? It's actually a lot louder. Even adjusting the motor height, I think is still not gonna it's just a screechier gearbox than the KWA. When it comes to weight and feel, um, the trigger bolt, these are blade triggers, but I think you actually get more positive reinforcement from the KWA over the GNG. So by looking at both of these, first off, you can't go wrong with either of them. They're both awesome brands, awesome reputations, awesome looking guns, even with the Nigel Thornberry undercut of the 5.56. Um, but overall, I like the performance and the durability right now of the KWA EVE series. We don't know how the, the body is gonna hold up, so that may change our opinion in the future. That, again, is the one weak spot that I would worry about. But overall, both great guns, both shoot very accurate. To me, the determination was the screechiness, and this screeches less than this. The great news is you can find both of these at meretactical.com at the best prices available and the fastest shipping. We're shipping right now. That's what that plane is for up there, that fast. We'll see you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe. And we out.